and welcome to the public hearing of the Prescott Planning and Zoning Commission meeting May 28th, 2020, which I will now call to order with my gavel. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Roll call. Commissioners present are Ted Samboji. Please say here if you're present. Here. Don Michaelman. Here. Thomas Hutchison. Present. George Lee. Thank you. Okay, this is our first and hopefully last virtual meeting, and it will require us to conduct business a little differently. When it comes to voting, we will not raise our hands as we would in council chambers, but Kaylee will call on you and then we can record your vote. If you intend to speak, please state your name so we know who's talking and can accurately record your vote. The number of commissioners present is four, and that will require three votes for a motion to succeed. Thank you. Please. This, I'm what, let me continue. This is an open public hearing and is being taped and recorded <clears throat> excuse me, and videotaped by the city. The proceedings are being televised by representatives of the public media, the public, local cable, and or radio stations, and may also be rebroadcast. Uh, as we've said before, please keep your phone or PC microphone on mute unless you are speaking to minimize the background noise. Our first item on the agenda is the reading the minutes of the last meeting by uh, city what, staff. What is going on here? It just keeps on bouncing back and forth. Am I on here? Yeah, yes, you are. And you're right. Francisca, you are on. <laughs> Rotate. So Kaylee, Rotates between people. Okay. Okay. Kaylee, would you be so kind as to read the minutes of the last meeting? To read them in full. <laughs> yeah. uh, are we going to take a vote on it? Well, sure, we have to. We need a motion and a second motion. Right. Please, to approve. Do we have a motion? This is Don Michaelman. I make a motion to approve the minutes from our February 13th. 2020 meeting. Do we have a second? I'll second it. And that's George Lee? That was that's George Lee. Lee. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, go ahead, now Kaylee. Vote. This Please is Tom. Yes or no? Ted Gamboji? Yes. Don Michaelman? Yes. Thomas Hutchinson? Is there an opportunity to ask a question? Yes. Certainly. Um, I, I did read the minutes, and I'm wondering if included in this veterinary clinic is a dog run of any kind. No, there was no dog run included. So, so my question then is, what what happens to the the uh, the business end of our pets that go to this clinic? Uh. We, we can catch you up later on some of the details. They're primarily a, a day type operation. They're not intended to keep pets overnight, so there was no reason to have any external space uh, on the site. Well, I, I've got I've got two Labradoodles, and I know that when I take them to the vet, the, the first thing they want to do is relieve themselves. I, I, just a thought. Understood. But I, so back to it. Uh, I back approve. to the motion. Thank you. And then George Lee, yes or no? Yes, I approve. Thank you. Kaylee, what was that vote then? Oh, the, the vote was unanimous. Okay. So let's oh, move for zero. Let's move to our first item of the business agenda. It's item ADM 19-009, 
a pre preliminary plat for Prescott City Subdivision. Do we have a report from the city staff? Yes, sir. That will be me. So I am George Worley. I'm planning manager here. Um, this is a proposal for a preliminary plat on some property located in an area that is currently an, a an APS yard. So the APS yard is an industrial use and the zoning for that area is industrial. Uh, what you see here is um, some information showing basically where it is in relation to some of our streets, West Sheldon Street, Lincoln Avenue in the, um, in the far west to the far left-hand side of the picture. The Sam Hill Warehouse that some of you are aware of is um, under consideration for inclusion with the Hilton Hotel that's under construction so that it could be a conference center use. And the properties in question particularly are three, one very large property in the middle, a smaller property that contains a warehouse building, and then an even smaller property that's actually currently zoned um, park use, but is uh, partially a roadway and partially parking. The aerial photo a little bit shows that. So there's the small area that's zoned um, and it's zoned um, natural open space, but you can see it's a parking area. It's part of their yard. It's, part, it's within their fenced compound. And this building is partially within the smaller parcel. The proposal before you today is a preliminary plat that would take these three parcels, which are not part of a subdivision, combine them together, and create two lots. And I will show you. So the subdivision plat, and I apologize, it's a little hard to read, but each of you have a copy of this as well. Uh, the subdivision plat indicates a larger parcel to the west that will probably be sold or leased to another user and will probably be back before you at some point in the future for rezoning to a non-industrial use. This area is surrounded by commercial uses to the south and residential to the north, and we really think the industrial in this area is probably a bit intense for that type of an area and it's likely to come back before you for rezoning to some form of commercial rather than industrial. The smaller parcel on the east will remain in APS's control. It will remain part of their um, APS yard storage. There's um, electrical equipment uh, within a compound there. All of that will remain in place and it will remain an industrial designation. So at this point, uh, we're creating through this subdivision plat two lots where we now have three unsubdivided parcels. And of those two lots to be created, one of them is likely to see future development. The other will remain an APS industrial use. So at that point, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I can put the drawings back up as you need them. George, Tom Hutchison here. Yes, sir. What does the blue line depict on the previous slide? That's actually a creek. So these are waterway designations in our mapping system. Uh -huh. So they indicate a creek to the north of the site and a creek to the west or to the east of the site. Thank you for clarifying. Not a problem. George, this is Don Michaelman. Could you yes, go sir. back to the proposed uh, plans there? Where will be the access to these two properties? Good question. Sorry, I should have covered that. So the Western parcel actually would have its access off of Lincoln Avenue from the West. It will have access via easements from the Eastern parcel, but that's probably not gonna be its primary use. The primary access will be Lincoln Avenue. The APS yard that will remain, the Eastern lot will have access off of Granite Street and there is an alley access between Granite and McCormick that has a gate now that will remain. May I ask a question? This is Steve Certainly. Zipper. Certainly. Um, 
this parcel is currently owned by APS? It is, yes. Is it planned that they will continue to own these parcels after the approval? The Eastern parcel will remain in APS's hands. That will remain um, an electrical yard, storage and other materials. The Western parcel that's being created is contemplated for potential sale to a different user or lease to a different user, a commercial use rather than industrial. Is that other user uh, already anticipated, known, or are they unknown at this time? At this point, we don't have any proposals in our hands for use of that property, so I don't have any information on that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from our commissioners? We, we do have Ryan Weed, who is representing APS on here. If you have questions for them directly, um, he, he's available to answer those questions. Well, this is Ryan. Just let me know if you got something. Very good. Gentlemen? Anyone? And we've... I guess that's a no. So, and we had comments from the public. Any more comments from the public? Okay. I guess Given those circumstances, I, I think you can take a motion if you would like, sir. So, do we have a motion? This is Don Michaelman. I'll go ahead and make the motion. I move that we approve ADM 19-009. We have a second. This is George Lee, I'll second it. Okay. All right, Kaylee, now... it's time to take a vote. All right, we will now vote. Please say yes or no after your name. Ted Gamboji. Approve. Don Michaelman. Yes. Thomas Hutchison. I approve. George Lee. Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. We're going to take just a second and swap positions, and you'll have Tammy DeWitt make your second presentation. All right. Our next agenda item is PLN 20-001 a preliminary plat for Luxor Prescott RV storage condominium. Do we have a report from the city staff? Yes, sir. This is Tammy DeWitt, community planner with the city of Prescott. Uh, good, morning. Here, good morning, chairman, members of the commission. Thank you for participating in, uh, with this process. Um, so what we have before you is a preliminary plant, a preliminary plat. Um, the parcel is zoned industrial light. Um, what they're proposing is a 128 unit subdivision. Um, basically, the building's almost complete, if not completed. It is a storage facility, and this will allow the individual storage units to be sold and owned individually as a condominium. And uh, you might have seen some billboards around town for it too. Um, I just saw one yesterday, I think on Willow Creek Road. So um, here we are, we have Center Point here and we have Venture Drive and it's back in this area here. Um, this is an imagery from 2017, but it is um, basically almost completed, if not almost totally complete. Um, so it is a 20, 128 unit facility. Um, so each of these units will be individually platted to be owned by separate people. That way they can use it for just storage. There are deed restrictions in regards to it about the uses of it. They cannot be lived in. They cannot have businesses out of them. They are for storage only. And they were built to meet a building code and fire code requirements to allow for this to happen since this is always um, planned from the very beginning. So this is the last process. A preliminary plat is required uh, before a final plat can be approved, hence we have to come through this process. Um, basically, these are from the plans, shows the different sizes of the units. 
There is a variety of sizes for whatever their needs are. And uh, the applicant is on the phone. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, this, this is George Lee. Yes. I have a question. Is the only access to this project from Venture Drive? Correct. The only access is off Venture Drive. And and I take it then that the gate will be there in that cul de sac. Correct. It's there. All right. Thank you. You're Tammy welcome. Tom. Tammy Tom Hutchison here. Yes. Um. Currently, that site is zoned industrial light. Correct. When you go to Luxter's website, you see that they're advertising these as commercial properties. Does this change? Does this approval, or if this does get approved, does that change the zoning? No, this is just a preliminary plat. They basically, it's it, it's a, because they are uh, storage units. That may be how they're advertising them, but it is still industrial industrial zoned, and this does not change that. This is just a plat. So, but from they are they're advertising for tax purposes that in fact these these units become a commercial property. And I can't answer any questions about taxing. That's a totally different through the county about how they be taxed. Um, we don't get involved in that. This is just a plaid to create the individual units. But Tom, Tom, I am aware that with uh, the state taxing authority, they tax based on the use, not based on the zoning. So it won't matter that it's industrial. If it's a commercial use under the state's tax law, they get taxed as a commercial use. Gotcha. Thank you. Who, who, was, who just spoke? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. It was Tom Hutchinson. Oh, and George. And George, sorry. George. <laughs> Any okay. other questions? Any Any other I have, questions? Uh, this is Don Michaelman. I have two questions. Um, one, did you mention that these are already under construction? Yes, it's already under construction. It's almost complete. Is there a reason why we're looking at it when it's basically already being constructed? Usually we look at them before construction starts, don't we? Um, sometimes, I mean, there's not a need for that because they were, they're being built to be individual condoized to meet the building code and the fire code. This, I mean, they, they can take any storage unit and condoize them like this. Um, it's just a, a plat process. We're not looking at the parking or the design or height that's already been done. So all we're looking at is a preliminary plat to, to create the individual units. Okay. Second question, is there anything in the documentations for the owners who buy these units concerning the storage of hazardous materials? You have gas could be in there. You could have other items in there. Yes, it's in their deed restrictions. Okay. And Thank the applicants you. can answer that too. It, and I, Tom Hutchison here again. I presume there must be some enforcement mechanism as part of their plan? I'll let the applicant answer that. Which kind of brings uh, us to, um, to the point where we uh, ask the applicant, are there any questions of the applicant? Uh, if I can answer, excuse me, this is Steve Henry with the uh, Lux Store. If I can answer the question about inspections, we do are, are subject to biannual fire inspections, uh, unit by unit. So that would cover that at that point. This is Steve Zipperman. I have a question of Stephen Henry. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to this property, is there going to be on site management of any kind? Is this going to be just a standalone? Is it going to be monitored by video? How is this property going to be operated? We'll have a local property management company, but there won't be anybody on site, but we will have uh, remote access, remote security cameras. So we'll have periodic inspections as part of that property management. We'll also have a condo uh, owners association that will be responsible for taking over those responsibilities to self manage. So there will be CCNRs recorded against each deed? Yes. 
there are CCNRs, and uh, we've already submitted a copy uh, to Tammy uh, that will be recorded as part of this uh, approval and will be a recorded document. If that is, answers your question. Is the property going to be gated and locked, the entire property, yeah. or is it going to be open access? No, it's a has a secured gate. Will be secured code. There's a sliding gate at the front. Uh, we're actually installing it this weekend, uh, and it will have individual privatized uh, combination codes uh, through RFID, uh, radio frequency ID, um, and uh, so it'll be assigned. We'll know who's coming in, who's going out. There'll be cameras on the vehicles themselves, as well as throughout the property. Great, Thank Tom Hutchison here. Tom Hutchison here again. What what are the hours of operation? It's twenty four seven. So so basically, somebody could come in and an owner could presumably come yeah. in, uh, open up his unit, get dropped off, spend the night in his RV, and that's okay. No, that's not okay. That's prohibited in the CCNRs. But but no, nobody's there. Wasn't. Nobody's there to stop no. him from doing that. Well, they'd be monitored by the uh, property management company, and if you know if they see something that's coming, somebody's coming in and not going out, they'll be alerted. That begs another question. This is Steve Zipperman. Um, right. There doesn't appear to be any parking uh, there, so they park in the alley right in front of the the road right in front no, of. There's, uh, this plat map doesn't show parking, but the approved we had to have parking as part of the requirement of the. Of uh, our permit uh, building permits, and so there is parking on the north uh, side of that that's not delineated on the plot map, but it is on uh, the approved plans that we're abiding by. And this, just to remind everyone, this is not a site plan approval, this is a, a plat just to create the unit. So they do meet all our code requirements for everything else. All this is a, is a preliminary plat to create the individual units. Like I said, this is not a site plan review about development criteria. Has that already been completed? Yeah. Yes. That's, That's been done internally because it's allowed by right. So I just have a question about operation of this. If I own one of these condo units, it's storage only. So I'm probably going to bring a truck with stuff in it, or I'm going to take a truck and I'm going to unload all my stuff out of my unit into the truck. And the question is, if there's parking a long distance away, it seems like it's going to be this design is going to block access on the road in order for people to load and unload. Is that true or is that not true? The, the, road, um, the, the alleyways in between here meet the requirements for a storage facility to allow people to park in front of their units and unload it. This, we, we review these. And it meets all our code requirements for a storage facility in regards to um, aisle width and parking. Maybe we'll have the applicant, Stephen, talk to that point. Yes, uh, this is Steve. Uh, the primary use of this, uh, as part of the requirements of the CCNRs, is that they store recreational vehicles in them. It's not for uh, a business, it's not for personal storage. Uh, it's it's an RV storage. That's how we're marketing it. That's what we're selling. It's part of the CCNRs. That's part of what we're doing. It's part of the management of the system to maintain that. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for the clarification. It wasn't clear. So, Tom Hutchison here again. So, please explain what what's the advantage of buying one of these units versus renting something. Uh, well, number one is you do get appreciation in an asset. It's an appreciation, appreciating asset rather than uh, just rent going out the door. Uh, another is uh, that uh, you have control of your unit. Uh, you can sublet it uh, according to the CCNRs. Uh, they have to meet. So it can be income producing for people. So, uh, and if they owned, uh, if the business owned it, there could be depreciating uh, tax aspects to it as well. And a business entity that owns it for the purpose of ownership that would store RVs and not operate a business out of it. You can't operate a business out of here. Cannot. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Any other questions of the applicant? Yeah, 
And I guess okay. it's time to make a motion. First motion. This is Bob Michael, and I'll go ahead and make the motion. Uh, move that we approve PLN 20-001. Do we have a second? I'll second it. And this is George Lee? It is. Okay, we will now vote. Ted Gambodi. Approve. Don Michael Men. Yes. Thomas Hutchison. Uh, I disapprove. Okay, George Lee. I approve. Motion passes three to four. Very Rewind. good. Good. Good job, Tammy. Thank you. Kaylee, Thank you. Uh, this is Don Michaelman again. In the past, yes. when we've had a one of the uh, commission members not approve a motion, we usually ask them the reasons why, so we could pass that on to the city council. Okay. Thank you for that pointer. Um, Tom, may you explain why you had the dissenting vote? Yeah, I, I've been involved in the aircraft business for a long time, and and I know. I know what people do with hangars that they own. They become much more than a hangar. They became a, become a place to hang out, a place to, to decorate and set up, becomes a, a semi office away from home and a whole bunch of other things. I'm not saying that's gonna, gonna happen here, but it, but it sure seems like we're opening the door to allow individual owners to basically set up uh, a little away from home oasis to do what they damn well please. That, that's my concern. Excuse my rant language. Could I make a comment on that, Sammy? Please. Just a, yeah, we've done everything to discourage that, Tom. I hear what you're saying, but we uh, we have no plumbing in, in in any of these. There's zero plumbing, zero waste, zero water. Uh, we have no air conditioning in anything, nor provisions for. They do not. In fact, it's a uh, part of the CCNR is not to have that. Also, uh, the electrical, uh, they have one uh, outlet in there that's shared uh, on one circuit with among three. So they actually have only capacity uh, at the maximum, and that's if they're overusing for 20 amps service. So I think we're, we're pretty well uh, set to overcome that and uh, deny that. As well as uh, what, what's in the CCNRs and, and just the general board enforcement. I think nobody that's in there wants to have that going on. So they're going to do everything they can to not have that. Steve, you, you understand, uh, Hutchison here again. Steve, you understand yes. the, the nature of RVs, don't you? Yes, uh, I understand they, that. Yeah, they, they do have all those things that you mentioned. Right. They have, it's possible. They, they, they have plumbing, they have water, they have all that stuff, they're self-contained, and 20 amps, being an Airstream owner, 20 amps is enough to run, keep the batteries up and to keep the thing going for quite a while. Plus you have a dump on site. Right, it's 20 amps for uh, three units and the dump is off site. I mean, I'm sorry, it's out of the unit. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thank that, you for that clarification, Steve. Tom, sure. do you have more to add? No, you get the idea where, where my head's at. Thank you. Oh. Okay, that uh, motion carried uh, three to four, correct? Three to one. Three to one. Three to one, excuse me. Three out of four. Do we have any other uh, items to discuss before we close? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we don't on this end. Bryn, do you have anything? I do. Thank you. Bryn Stotler, Director of Community Development. Thank you, Acting Chair Gamboji, for your leadership today. We appreciate it under these unusual circumstances. And thanks all of you for participating in this unconventional way. I know it's not exactly seamless, but it does accomplish the mission. Um, I did want to take a moment, since we didn't at the top of the agenda, to formally welcome our newest commissioner, Tom Hutchison. Thank you, Tom, for being here and participating in the meeting as well. Um, we do have three vacancies right now due to some recent departures 
And as George mentioned earlier, the subcommittee on uh, appointments is going to meet on June the 4th and they will consider the applicants who have applied to assume a planning and zoning commission position um, with some staff input as well. So um, by the 4th, there will be some recommendations coming forward to the full city council to appoint the three vacancies. And we look forward to having those new members join us um, for the early meeting in June. So we look forward to that. And once again, just thanks all, to all of you, um, including the applicants and the public participants today who um, took, took part in our meeting. We really appreciate uh, the extra efforts that are involved in making a meeting like this successful. So thank you. Thank you, Bryn. Uh, Bryn, this is George Lee. Yes, Commissioner Lee. Um, could you speak to the vacancies that we now have? Did they all leave for the same reason? Or can you speak to that at all? Um, one of our commissioners actually relocated out of state and the other two commissioners submitted resignations. And that's really as much information as I have. Um, so we will be um, working diligently to go through the applicants that are the applications that are received by the city clerk she does allow us to view those applications and and sort of um, hone in on any relevant experience and hopefully we've got some folks who have had uh, some related experience to uh, planning or zoning or uh, involvement in committees, boards, and commissions. So we, we look forward to having a full commission at our next meeting. I hope I answered your question. Well, Thank you, Brent. You have, you have, and I just want to voice my opinion, and that is the three vacancies we now have really um, embraced all of those talents that you just mentioned about the city government, about development, about all the things that this commission reading really needs. And um, I'm sure that the city council will be looking in that direction to be able to replace them because those three men that are now missing were very valuable to this commission. Very much agree with you, Commissioner Lee. They had a, a tremendous depth of experience and we are going to miss their voices on our commission greatly. Um, and, you know, I guess the, the only thing I can add is that times do change, priorities, personal priorities do change, locations change. So we, we hope to um, rebuild the commission in a way that is very meaningful to the work that we do. And we appreciate all of your participation and the input that you're offering to the communities. And, and one more thing, um, we, we really um, make an effort to honor our volunteers that depart from commissions, boards, and committees. And because of the unusual circumstances with the coronavirus issue, um, we were unable to do that with uh, former chair Sheets and the two resignations, but we do secure a, um, a gift of acknowledging their service and intend to share that with them, um, you know, unfortunately by, by basically mailing it to them if we are unable to meet in person. Um, but we will extend the wishes uh, or the, the thoughts of the commission and, and give you guys an opportunity to also um, potentially express your appreciation for their service as well through some communication that we do with that gift, that acknowledgement of your service. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Any other comments? This is Steve Zipperman. I uh, just wanted to mention that I am one of the applicants uh, for one of the vacant positions. I'd be happy to help and serve on the community commission. Thank you. If there are no further items to be discussed, I'd like to move to close this meeting. But before I do, I'd like to send out a special thanks to the planning commissioners who have given to this city and retired. George Sheets was our chair and a leading force in building the Prescott Circle Trail, which I hiked after our YMCA closed due to COVID-19. It's 56 miles in the mountains surrounding our fair city and I highly recommend it. The other commissioner was Mel Root who 
brought us a wealth of knowledge from California. And last, but certainly not least, Ken Maberak, who served on this commission for a dozen years, I think, and along the way, tutored mayors and new commissioners. Gentlemen, thank you all for your great sacrifice that you made Prescott a better place. So with that, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Uh, this is George Lee. What about Terry Marshall? Uh, I can speak to that. This is Bryn Stotler again. Um, so Terry's term expired and he actually missed the, the deadline to reapply. Not intentionally, it was just an oversight. So he has actually submitted an application for one of the three vacancies. I think you'll all be happy to know. Well, I, I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you very much, Bryn. You're welcome. Now, do we have a motion to adjourn? So I'll move. make a motion. <laughs> George Lee, okay. you made a motion. I would like to make the motion for adjournment. Do we have a second? Second. Hutch Hutchison here. I, I second. Ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for your patience as we navigated our way through our first and hopefully last virtual planning commission meeting for May 28th, 2020. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.